Right on there. Uh oh. I hate that sound. That is bad. See, that's what happens when we try to run our air conditioner on just our inverter. A few months ago, we did a video about dry camping with our 16 year old Honda 2000 watt generator while we were in Canada over the summer. We got a lot of questions in that video about using our air conditioning while on generator. And on our way to Canada from Florida, I actually convinced Larry to stop at a rest area in Pennsylvania. You know our destination versus journey problem. Well, that was a mistake. Inside the RV was in the 80s, even with the windows open, and the truckers had their engines on all night long. None of us got a whole lot of sleep that night. And believe it or not, we had many seriously hot days in Canada. And it seemed like most of our campsites had no power. But why couldn't we run the AC? Didn't we just spend 10,000 on lithium and solar? Now we cannot use our air conditioner from inverter power or generator power. Now that we're back in Florida for the winter, we really need to find a way to get our air conditioning to work on generator or inverter if we wanted to dry camp or boondock here in Florida. Yes, we still get days in the 80s in November. Now we could just get a bigger portable generator or install a built-in one into our fifth wheel, but we love our small portable generator for its versatility. In this video, we will show you how the MicroWare Easy Start solved our problem, how it works, the installation testing successful demonstration. Glad you guys are back, but if you just found us, I'm Alice. And I'm Larry. And we are downsizing makes sense like the penny. And we are two 50 something empty nesters who went full time in this RV mid February with our two pups because we wanted to live life more deliberately. The problem, our AC unit only draws about 10 amps while running and our generator can put out about 13 amps continuous and about 17 amps peak. And our Victron 3000 watt inverter can handle about 20 amps continuous and 25 amps peak. So we should be fine as long as we don't have a lot of other things running while we have the AC on. But when an AC unit first starts up, the compressor requires a huge surge in power to the motor windings to get the compressor spinning. This is called lock rotor amps. And our, on our Coleman Mach 15 RV rooftop AC unit, it's over 50 amps. This surge in power is what overloads our inverter and stalls our generator. The MicroWare Easy Start device is a custom designed soft starter for rooftop RV AC units. It employs a four part ramp sequence that is self optimizing, resulting in the lowest possible startup current. It reduces locked rotor amps and surging power by about 65 to 70 percent. To illustrate how the Easy Start solved our problem, I created this diagram. The graph shows time on the x-axis and amperage on the y-axis. This red line is our inverter capacity of about 25 amps. The green line is our generator capacity of about 17 amps. This yellow line is the AC startup without the easy start. Now this blue area is the inverter overload and generator stall zone. Now this yellow line is our AC startup amps with the easy start. The compressor ramps the power up slower and reduces the peak amp power below the generator and inverter capacities. Some things to consider if you're thinking about installing this MicroWare Easy Start yourself. Are you a DIYer type of person that's comfortable taking things apart and working on electrical wires? If you own an RV, you're going to have to learn how to be handy and repair stuff yourself, or you're going to be spending a lot of time and money at an RV service center. Now you have to spend some time going up and down a ladder to the roof of your RV to work on the AC, so you must be comfortable with working up on the roof. Have you ever changed the light switch or a plug in your house? Then you can do this DIY upgrade. It's very easy to install. Four wires connect to the Easy Start. Two wires plug directly into the run capacitor and the other two will have to be spliced into the current wiring. This installation video will focus on the Coleman Mach 15, but should apply to other Coleman models like the Mach 1, Mach 3, Mach 3 Plus, and Mach 10. If you have a different brand of RV rooftop AC unit, see the MicroWare website for specific installation instructions and wire connection diagrams for Dometic, Furion, Carrier, and Atwood. There are two Easy Start models, the 364 and the 368. The 364 is for all 
RV rooftop AC models, which are usually about 13 to 15,000 to 16,000 BTUs. Now the instruction sheet that comes with your microware Easy Start here has four simple steps. Talks about safety first. Number two, it has these QR codes that you can scan with your phone, which will take you to the wiring diagrams for your specific unit. I actually went and printed mine so that I had them on the roof with me. It talks about the easy learning process. You have to start your RV AC unit five times after you install it to train it to work with your AC unit, very important. And then the fourth step is time for a test. Make sure you test your unit either on your generator or inverter after your installation. Don't wait to your first boondocking venture to make sure that it works right. Now some of the tools and supplies you'll need, obviously you'll need your MicroAir Easy Start unit. I printed my instructions from their website, so I had it on the roof with me. You're gonna need wire connectors to make your connections. You're gonna need double-sided mounting tape to mount the unit, some electrical tape, some wire cutters and crimpers, a Phillips head screwdriver, a drill driver is really nice if you've got one, and an amp meter is great, but not necessary. Before we get into the installation, let's talk a little bit about safety. First of all, make sure your breakers are off. If you've got two ACs, turn both breakers off just to make sure. Also, getting up and down in your RV, make sure you have a safe way to get yourself and your tools up. I like to use an angled ladder zip tied to my RV ladder. It makes it a little safer to get up and down. And then I use a string with a for my bag of tools to bring it up and down so I don't have to haul it up and down the ladder. Okay, the first thing, I've got my list of instructions here and I've got my tools and tool bags. First thing we're gonna do is take off the lid right here. Just four screws, pull off the shroud quick and easy. Pull that off there like that. Now that we got the cover off the AC unit, I'm just gonna go through a couple of the parts that are here under the hood. First of all, we got the condenser right here and the condenser coils. Here's the fan motor, and that is the condenser fan blade. We have the compressor right here. This right here, the evaporator is under here. We do not need to take off the cover here for the evaporator. Uh, we also have, this is the electrical box uh, right here. And the compressor wires are right here. First of all, let's pull off this cover. Just kind of loosen this top screw first. Loosen that one up, and then you pull these bottom two screws. Pull the lid off. You see on the inside of the lid, we have the schematic for uh, this air conditioner. Let's go over the components here. First of all, we have our run cap for our compressor. We have our start cap here, which goes to our motors. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to short out those two uh, capacitors right there because we don't want to get a nasty shock from that. So those are shorted out. Okay, so we're going to follow our wires here. We got our red wire, our black wire, and our white wire. We got our run, our common, and our start. And they run into this capacitor. So this red wire right here, right here, goes in. It goes into this side of the run capacitor. This white wire here comes in and goes down and goes to the other side of the um, run capacitor. The black wire goes and meets up with this purple wire right here. And those are the three wires that we're gonna be concerned with when we're connecting our Easy Start. Okay, so the next thing we have is our Easy Start. Right now we have to, we're gonna mount our Easy Start out here somewhere. We can either mount it right here or we're gonna mount it um, along the bottom in here. Some people mount it down under there. So uh, we're gonna have to put the easy start will be in this area right here somewhere. And then um, the wires are gonna route through this hole. There's a plastic ring on the inside of the hole to keep the wires from chafing. Just take your time routing the wires. I think I'm gonna end up mounting it probably standing up like that. So here are the four wires that come from the easy start. We got an orange wire, a white wire, a black wire, and a brown wire. And we'll go through these one at a time real quickly. So the black wire is the common wire. This is gonna get matched up with the black wire that goes to the compressor. This black wire here goes to this compressor wire right here, and it matches up with this purple wire. So we're gonna cut these two, and we're gonna match that one into there. So that's the black wire, okay? The brown wire is going to connect. We're gonna pull this white wire off this side of the um, run capacitor. We're gonna pull this off, we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna put the brown wire connected to the white wire. 
the white wire here goes back where we pulled this white wire off is going to connect back onto where the white wire is and the orange wire is going to connect to the other side where this red wire, the red wire right here that comes from the compressor, it's going to connect to that other side there. Before we make our connections to the Easy Start and get it all started up, we're going to do a couple of tests. We are going to um, test it. We're going to do the, um, we're going to test how much amps it pulls on the black wire here to the compressor. And um, we're going to do that with a meter that can do inrush. So it can, it can measure locked rotor amps, which it happens in a split second. So you need a special um, amp meter that can pull that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to our black wire here. And um, we are going to run it with, um, without doing anything to the system. Then I'm going to try it with one of these hard start capacitors and see if it makes any difference. Okay. Okay, honey, turn on the AC. Okay, there it goes. 52.07. That is our amps. That was how much amps it took for the system to start up. Okay, honey, stop it. I'm going to run the test again. This time I'm going to do it with a $10 hard start kit attached to the run capacitor to see if there's any advantage to using one of these inexpensive kits. Okay, so it went to 48, so it made a small difference in the amount of power, but it only brought it down like 4 amps, which is not very much. I'm going to remove the hard start kit I just installed and get ready to install the easy start. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make our connection. So the first wire that I want to do, and I got my instructions up here to make sure I want to do the brown, the, the brown easy start wire. I want to connect to the white wire coming up here. Did I make sure I discharge that? So this white wire. So we got this white wire and this white wire goes to the compressor. Confirm you got your correct wire. So this white wire is going to go to this brown wire here. So we're going to make that connection. So I've got to cut off this connector and then we're going to use an end cap connector to connect these. So this is the type of connector that we're going to use to connect those two. So we're going to cut this white wire and we're going to connect it to the brown wire. So I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to strip this. I need about a half an inch. So I'm going to take our brown wire. We're going to put those in there. So the best thing to do is to kind of put them together really good like that maybe first. Put your connector on. You can actually see they're going all the way through the connector there. Then I'm going to take my crimper here and I'm going to crimp it really good. <clears throat> crimp that really good. And I can see that that got crimped really nice and tight. And you can see, you can see inside there that it's crimped really good. And I pull on those wires, make sure they're crimped really good. Okay, so we got the black wire. Sorry, the, we got the brown wire and the white wire connected here. Now, we're going to take this black wire and we're going to connect it where this black wire goes up here to the compressor. So we're just, we're sure that that's the we're sure that that's the black compressor wire, and we're going to cut this wire and put all three of those together. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to take our cutter here, cut that off, and then we're going to strip the purple wire. And we're going to strip the black wire that's coming from, I don't have the greatest hand strength because of my arthritis. So we're going to take the black wire, we're going to put all three of these wires together here. Take all three of these, we're going to get them, we're going to try to zip them up there pretty nice and tight. Make sure we got them pretty even there. What I like to do is to kind of trim it off a little bit, just to make sure that they all go in evenly. I'm going to take another one of these connectors, kind of spin it as it goes in, make sure it goes in all the way. I want all three wires to go in there. Let's see if I can see inside there. I can see inside there to make sure all three wires 
or make it into that connector equally. And it looks pretty good, right? And then we're gonna take our crimper here. We're gonna go like that. Get it in there nice and tight and crimp. That's on there really nice and tight. Again, we're looking inside, making sure it looks like it all got connected good. We're gonna pull on each wire. So, you know, not crazy pull, but pull. Confirm again, black wire going to the compressor, uh, black wire going to our easy start, and a purple wire going in outside the electrical box. So those three wires are done. Now the last two, the last two wires are really easy. These just connect up to our run capacitor. Like I said before, the white wire goes to where it came off of the run capacitor before, and there's already got a connector on it. So then just push that on there. You gotta make sure that you actually get it on the connector there instead of just beside it. You can see I've got it on there really nice and good now. And then my orange wire goes to the other side of the uh, capacitor. I'm just gonna, okay, good. Now it's on there nice and tight. So we're just gonna confirm that they're all going to the right place, okay. So our, our white ES wire goes to this side of the run cap. Our orange ES wire goes to this side of the run cap. Our black ES wire connects to the black common wire going to the compressor and the purple wire. The brown ES wire connects to the white wire that was connected to this side of the uh, run capacitor. So all our connections are good. So all we have to do now is test it. Now that your Easy Start is all wired in, you have to go through the Easy Start learn process. You turn your breakers back on, set your thermostat low enough so your AC compressor comes on, let the compressor run for about 30 seconds, set the thermostat to turn off the compressor, now leave it for about five minutes, and then repeat steps two through five four more times so you have a total of five starts. Now your Easy Start has learned your air conditioner. And so now we're going to retest the system that it's run five times through the learning process. And let's see how much more reduced the amps are that are pulling from the compressor here. Now, the Easy Start runs in like two stages. It'll turn on the fan motors, then about five seconds later, it'll turn on the compressor motors. So you're gonna see one number, and then you'll see it jump up. Okay, there's three amps that's just starting up the system. And we're gonna see this jump up now. Okay, good, 12.73. So our new inrush, our new lock rotor amp, max amperage is 12.73 instead of uh, 52 originally and 48 with the hard start kit, which is just an awesome improvement. Just gonna fast forward, mounting the easy start to the back wall of the evaporator, just cleaned it up with some alcohol, used some really strong double-sided mounting tape and secured it um, just as long as you make sure that the wire is facing down, you can put it anywhere in that area. And this is what it looked like when it's all mounted and done. The last thing I have to do is uh, put the uh, door back on the electrical box, just to secure it with the two screws. And then just finish it off by putting the cover back on. Uh, just the four mounting screws, make sure you hook it up under the front and you're all done. After you finish your installation, it's really important to test your inverter and generator power with the AC running with the Easy Start. Here I have my inverter on and it's handling the air conditioner no problem. I went outside, cranked up my generator, connected it to the RV and made sure the generator did not stall with the AC on full power. I also used my amp meter right at the box to test how much total power my air conditioning was using with the Easy Start, 15.4 amps. And then I tested my other AC that did not have the Easy Start installed, and that was 57 amps. I am so glad Larry installed this Easy Start so we can run the bedroom air even when not on shore power. We have been hearing a lot of great things about the Micro Air Easy Start. It's great to see it lives up to its reputation. Now we are not affiliates and do not have a relationship with Microware, but we were able to get a discount code for $25 off if you order directly from Microware. Now we will have a code and links in the description. Now you can also get the Easy Start from Amazon Prime, but you'll actually save about $15 by ordering it direct with our code. Now I struggle to keep these videos short. 
and I want to have a ton of great info in them, but nobody wants to watch a 30 minute DIY video. So if you have any questions or if there's something that I left out and didn't include in the video, please leave a comment. You can also message me on Instagram or Facebook. I'll get Larry to give me the answers because he's the DIY guy. Now we do lots of videos like this. We do RV DIY projects like this, campground tours, RV tours, full-time RV living. If you're into that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll leave a link right down there. And I'll also leave a link right over here somewhere for something for you to check out next. Yes. And remember, downsizing still makes sense.